Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Honda Civic, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. So right off the bat, I think the hitch looks pretty good on the back of the Civic actually. Even though it is completely visible, it kind of has a bat wing design and tapers off and kind of just disappears back here. And it sits up nice and tight against the bottom of our Civic. With these cars riding pretty low to the ground, that's important. It's gonna keep everything up nice and high and you shouldn't have any issues there. Speaking of that clearance, it's also gonna have really good bumper clearance. So what I mean by that is the end of the receiver tube opening is going to be just about flush with the bottom of our bumper here. And since many Civic owners plan on using their hitch for accessories like folding bike racks, this should work out real well. Shouldn't give you too many issues when you go to put that accessory in that upright position. Shouldn't have to worry about it hitting the back of your Honda. Now this is a class one hitch. So it's gonna have that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And it's gonna have a reinforced collar for extra strength. And honestly, I think it looks pretty good too. Kind of gives it a more finished appearance. And it's going to have the standard half inch size pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included. But if you need one, you can find it here at each right It's gonna have plate style safety chain openings, which are really nice and thick and durable. And they should give us just about enough room to use any size hook that we might have. Now, as far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 200 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one and two bike racks, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 2,000 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now, I do always like to suggest never a bad idea just to grab your Civic's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Honda can pull that much weight safely. And if you do plan on doing some light duty towing or maybe even have a light up accessory, I would suggest picking up some trailer wiring. That way the lights on your trailer will match up with the lights on your Civic and you'll be safe and legal. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you're gonna use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 12 inches. So if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, chances are pretty good you're gonna to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about four inches. And you're gonna use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So overall, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. I honestly think, in my opinion, this is the best looking one that's available for the Civic. And it's gonna allow you to do the things that you wanna do in your Honda. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is a little involved. There's really nothing too crazy, but it does take a little bit of time. As long as you stay patient, you shouldn't have any issues getting it done at home, in your garage, or maybe even in the driveway. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Civic, and what we're gonna to need to do is remove this plastic underbody panel. So we're gonna have a couple different types of hardware. The first ones that we're gonna to need to remove are here in the center, and these are just going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. So I'll go ahead and grab my socket, and pull those out. And then if we look just behind our rear tire on the driver's side, we're gonna have another 10 millimeter bolt. Then we're gonna have a total of four push pin style fasteners along the edge of our underbody panel. So we're gonna have one here, 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 and right here in the corner. Now the way to get these out, you can use either a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver, but you're just gonna kind of pry underneath the head of that fastener and work it out. I'll use that same technique to get the others out. Once we have all of them out, we can kind of grab our underbody panel, pull it down and out, and set it to the side. 
Now what we're gonna need to do is lower our exhaust a little bit to give us some more room to work. However, I do suggest taking a strap and just running it from side to side. That way that exhaust will have a little bit of support and we can kind of control how fast and how far we let it down. So we're gonna have a rubber exhaust hanger here just above our tailpipe. And to get this off, you can spray it down with some soapy water or some penetrating oil, it just makes it a little easier. We're gonna take a pry bar and work the rubber portion off of the metal hanger. Sometimes these can be a little bit tricky trying to find a good spot to pry, but I just work at it and eventually we'll get it off. Now what we can do is remove our heat shield. So it's gonna be held in place by four 10 millimeter fasteners, just like this one here. So we're gonna have one in each corner. I'll go ahead and grab my socket and pull those out. Once we have those removed, we can pull our heat shield out and set it off to the side for now. Now I'd like to point out our attachment points on our frame rail. Now keep in mind from this point on, anything we do to this side of our Civic, we're also gonna do on the other side because it's set up the same way, including these attachment points here. So we're gonna have a total of two. We're gonna be using this hole and this one right here. We'll go ahead and start with this one towards the very back. We need to get our hardware in place. So we're gonna take the coiled end of a fish wire, run it through that hole and push it towards the front of our Honda. And what we're trying to do is get that coiled in to drop out of this larger hole here. Once we have it out, we're going to take the spacer block, slide that over the fish wire and a carriage bolt. And what you're gonna do is thread that carriage bolt onto the fish wire. And we can kind of feed our hardware into the frame rail. Find it easier to do, do it one at a time. We're gonna pull on the other end of our fish wire. We're gonna have to kind of work it around a little bit, but we're trying to get that bolt to drop out through that opening. Just like that. And for this attachment point here, we're actually going to use what's called the handle nut, which is this here. So this is gonna slide in through this larger hole and line up with our attachment point there. So what I like to do is just kind of eyeball the distance, put a little bend in it, slide it up into place. And once we get it close, we're just gonna let it kind of hang out for now. So now what we can do is trim our underbody panel. So there's a diagram in the instructions and I went ahead and just marked that out right here. And I'm gonna use a pair of 10 snips. This is pretty thin plastic. You could probably use regular pair of snips, a Dremel tool, maybe even a sharp knife. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. Now we can focus on trimming our heat shield. Again, there's a diagram in the instructions telling you where to cut. I went ahead and marked that area out here. It says metal, so I do suggest using a pair of 10 steps like this to get that trimmed out. With our heat shield trimmed, we can reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it with one exception. Since we cut this little area out, we're not gonna have to worry about reinstalling that bolt. So what I like to do is kind of get all of them started hand tight. 
And then once they're in place, we can come back with our socket and snug them down. And before we install our hitch, we need to put our trimmed underbody panel back in place. So this will just get reinstalled the opposite way that we removed it. Now we can take our hitch and raise it into position. So when you're holding it like this, you wanna make sure that your pull wire on each side goes through the corresponding hole in the hitch. And then we can slide everything up. And what we're gonna do you can see right here there's a little tow hook kit's gonna come with a u-bolt u-bolt's gonna go around like that and we can line that u-bolt up with the holes in our hitch and we're gonna loosely secure the nut so it's just two hex nuts that go on it once you get both these started that'll kind of help hold the hitch into position. So now that the hitch is supporting itself, what you wanna make sure of is that the metal exhaust hangers here go above our hitch. So you can kind of pull out and work it like that. Then we're able to lift our hitch all the way up and our carriage bolts here, we can pull off fish wire. Again, take a flange nut and get these started hand tight. Now for the hardware that attaches to our handle nut, it's going to be a bolt with a conical tooth washer. Make sure that the teeth on the washer are going to face up towards the hitch. So this will just line up with the handle nut. It's a little tight here. Sometimes it helps to kind of hold that handle nut steady and that'll make it a little easier to thread in. Now what we can do is snug down the hardware on our frame rail. So this bolt here, you can grab a three quarter inch socket, run that down, and the other bolt, you can use an 11 16 Then we can come back to the center and tighten down the nuts here on our U-bolt. Now when you snug these down, you're gonna make sure to do them evenly. That way it'll draw down the same on each side and keep everything nice and tight. And don't forget to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in your instructions. And to just kind of help clean up our install look, what I'm gonna do is just paint this U-nut black. That way it'll blend in a little bit better. Now I simply just re-secured our exhaust the opposite way that we removed it. Now it's a little tight up here and can be kind of tricky to get everything lined up. But what I found that really helps is if you really soak it down good with some that penetrating oil or soapy water that really helps everything kind of just go back together the way it should and now that the exhaust is supporting itself and go ahead and get rid of our strap and that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on our 2015 Honda Civic